What's up guys, this video is about kiting. The first thing I would like to point out is that this video is not about speedrunning, it's about clutching it out when you're the last man standing against overwhelming odds. So I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna talk about some of the theory behind it and kind of how I look at kiting. And then I want to go into a couple gameplay examples and explain some of the common mistakes and common pitfalls that there are. Kiting is a linearization of an engagement through movement or in other words, simply running away. There's many situations in Vermintide 2 where kiting is the only solution to the problem that the game faces you with. Situations like when you have a boss plus a horde plus specials things like that end up wiping most parties on legend because players don't know how to move under pressure so before we talk about how to kite you need to understand the mechanics that govern movement in this game the first is that the enemies are faster than the base player speed so enemies will always catch you if you just run in a straight line at base speed but if you increase that to five percent you can slowly outpace them and if you increase that to ten percent you can pretty rapidly outpace them the speed you move when you hold block the distance you move when you dodge and the amount of effective dodges you have are all dependent upon your weapon with larger weapons weapons generally being less mobile and smaller weapons being more mobile. Players can traverse obstacles faster than enemies, in particular vertical obstacles. Enemies always take the shortest distance to the players at any given time, and that players cannot clip through enemies. So the takeaway from this is that we have to combine blocking, dodging, terrain, and possibly movement speed if we want to be successful. Kiting is a matter of economics where your currency is time, because if you stop moving it's only a matter of seconds before the horde catches you and kills you. So the question is how many seconds seconds do you have? Do you have one second? Do you have 10 seconds? Every action you do is either going to earn you more seconds or it's going to cost you seconds. So when kiting, I break my time budget and my play style down into about three modes, defensive, stable, and offensive. If I have less than three seconds and I'm still vulnerable to running attacks, I'm in a defensive mode where I'm going to play safe. I'm not going to be aggressive. I'm not going to take any risks because I need to get that separation of about five seconds or so to get into a stable mode where I have a couple seconds of something happens, I'm not constantly having to dodge every single enemy attack, I have some time where I can think about a plan, I can be a little bit more relaxed. In moments where I have more than 5 seconds, I can take big offensive actions like using tools and going for revives and things like that. So I found it useful to think of time as a currency in this defensive, stable, and offensive kind of modes, and I think that's helped me kind of understand the situation, help me make better decisions. But if it doesn't help you, that's fine. Do whatever works for you. Alright, so here's like a real world example. This was just a, a whatever, a demonstration run for the purposes of this video. I just went to against the grain because it has a big wide open area because a lot of people have trouble here and kiting is, is something I've had to do a lot in this area to save runs. And so what's happened is we have a rat patrol that's been aggroed and of course all the bots died. Not an uncommon scenario. And right now I'm running sword and dagger which has 85% block speed and I'm running no other movement things so like base move speed and base dodge distance uh, for this weapon. And I just want to point out uh, just how close the enemies are to you. It's very hard to kind of, to get this separation and your number one priority is to purchase separation. So many times people will turn around and they'll try to fight. Let me turn around. They'll turn around and they'll try to fight when the enemies are right on top of them like that. Like, oh, I got hit. Let me turn around and try to engage. If you try to engage and they're this close, you're going to die. That guy would have killed you right there if you would have tried to, you know, take an offensive action. You're within the running attack radius. The key is to get outside of the running attack radius. Once you're outside of that radius, then you're in a stable position. Then you can start thinking about what offensive actions you want to take, uh, things like that. And like if a, if a disabler comes, you can start to deal with that special or whatever. Right now, if an assassin came, I mean, how many seconds of time do I have to deal with it? Like one, maybe two? You know, it, it'd be extremely difficult. Another thing I would point out, I let myself get hit there to demonstrate, even if you just run straight, they catch you. I'm just running straight, I'm not holding block. They catch me anyway. However, you can get some distance. Later on, I um, and we'll and we'll go from how it was earlier, where they are right on top of me, to now having, you know, stable, and we're outside of their uh, charge attack. So we're just gonna start dodging and dodging. I don't know what the effective dodge count is in Vermintide 2, I'm sure you can look it up. So I just do a couple, like four or five dodges, and then a jump to reset my dodge count. And just like this, now I'm not getting charged attack anymore. I'm not taking any damage to my stamina anymore. And I have a little bit of time. So if something happened, I would have, you know, a couple more seconds uh, to deal with it. Now, I certainly don't have enough time to revive either one of these guys. And that's another thing I see people do all the time. They don't look at their budget, right? I only have like three or four seconds right now, but to revive someone is like six or seven seconds. I can't afford that. If I did that, I would die and I would lose the game. Okay, so now here's another run and you'll notice I'm running dual daggers. And in this particular run, I have 10% movement speed and the dodge trait as well. So it's, I'm able to generate distance from the horde a lot easier this time. And I kind of want to show the difference between how much easier it is for me to get away from them now compared to the last run. 
So here I'm just doing a couple dodges, but I can just quit dodging really quickly. And then I can just run forward and I can get a lot of separation. Look how much distance there is between them compared to the last one. I'm just walking backwards, right? I don't have to dodge, I don't have to do anything, and they can't catch me. And that's the advantage that the 10% movement speed gives you. Now you absolutely don't need it, it, but it does make life a lot easier. Another thing I'd like to point out is you can't make tight turns if you have a lot of enemies chasing you because the AI is going to come directly to where you're at. They're not smart. They're just going to take the shortest straight line distance to you. So let's take this example where we have a lot of enemies following us. In fact, we have enemies all the way back on that wall over here. And when we cross this opening, the straightest line distance for the enemies over there is going to be the cro is going to be to cross the wall in front of me. And so that's what they do, not because they're smart, not because they're trying to cut me off or anything, because that's just the simplest path for them to take. And so a lot of times, if you make a, t a turn that is too tight, when you have too many enemies following you, the enemies in the rear will cut you off and that can get you killed. So you need to be careful with that. Okay, so another mistake that people make all the time is they put themselves in situations where they can't get out of. So like, let's say they want to uh, get that player right there. They'll come around here, they'll say, oh, well, I'll try to buy a little bit of time. I'll kind of lead the horde around this weird, you know, path. They'll come here, they'll say, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. And at this point, it's GG. They've lost. Because they put themselves in a situation that they can't get out of. So let's look at this. See, so now at this point, uh, while I only have a handful of enemies, my goal is to come around this path and to get out of here. And watch what happens. This guy is going to come right here. And he cuts me off in this slot. I can't walk through there. That was my goal was to walk through there. I can't walk through there. And that would have been a right, a wipe just like that. Because of that last single straggler enemy. All right, so another thing that will get you killed is little obstacles on the ground, like this water trough or like a stump or things like that. Things that you think that you should be able to walk around but end up becoming a little bit more difficult than you anticipated. So in this scenario, I'm gonna walk up to here to get away from these guys. All right, I'm gonna stay on this path and I wanna go around the, the water trough but I end up dodging into the water trough and it almost gets me killed. You can see there, just hovering for that, just hovering for a couple seconds there. Uh, for a couple fractions of a second, almost killed me. That little hiccup almost cost the game. And it's little things like that that will get you killed more often than anything else. So when it comes time to do offensive actions, you want to do them when you have the most time saved up. And that's usually right around drop downs because you can get over that drop down much quicker than enemies can. Verticality is your best friend. So like in a situation like this where I have lots of guys behind me, if I had like a Hagbane or if I had a bomb, or maybe I was slayer and I had a two-handed hammer. You could do an enormous amount of AOE damage, or Drake fires, or whatever it is. You could do a lot of damage to these guys right here because they're all bunched up and you have a lot of time. I could have gotten a health off. I could have done lots of things. I could have even gotten a revive up probably with the space I created by using that maneuver right there. So the two biggest mistakes that I see people make is they lose separation and they lose control. They engage the enemy before they're ready to. When the enemy is way too close to them, they start taking offensive actions and they pay for it. And then the other thing is they get themselves, they back themselves in corners and they make positional errors. The best way to avoid these pitfalls is to practice and to be patient. So the best way to practice is just to play. I think that the beginning parts of Against the Grain and the beginning parts of War Camp are two really good places to practice true solo and to practice kiting around in a circuit. Kiting is a very important survival skill and it's going to come up a lot when you play Legend in Vermintide 2.